easy thing to dry. So he is furious and with that little anger and frustration he looks at that little bird, the sparrow sitting on the top. And to his surprise, just out of his anger when he looks at that sparrow, it falls down dead. And he says, look at that. My tapasya, my parents, really has reached a point where now my anger can bring about somebody's death. I have to be very careful. But is it, this is an achievement. Ordinarily, you know, we get angry at each other and it doesn't make any difference to the other person at all. In fact, the other person is more amused at your anger. So you understand what is the level of tapasya. And when he is amused, he teases you more. And that makes you even more angry. And since we come for discourses and any spiritual, you know, uh, what do they call, gatherings, people have a reason. They say, you are getting angry, but you are supposed to be spiritual, aren't you? And that makes you even more angry. <laughs> Just because I go for spirituality, does that mean that I have no license to get angry? <laughs> Only you have the license? Well then, then he goes into the village to ask for the arms, picture. And he comes to this house where the lady is very busy looking after the children, her in-laws and the husband. And you know, just as in any household, the woman of the house and she's multitasking various things at the same time. She sees this ascetic come to the door for arms and she says, Baba Jalalokna, wait for a few minutes. Let me just take care of this children and you know the old man who needs my attention and I will come back to you. I will bring the diksha for you. He's becoming impatient because that her children don't seem to be, you know, they are not stopping anywhere. And so he, he becomes a little angry and with a frown on his forehead, he looks at her as, you know, to, to show his disapproval. She simply looks at him and she says, I'm not a sparrow to die. I'm not a sparrow to die. Look at this woman. She seems to be chasing the children, changing their diapers, looking after the people, feeding the people. And how did she know that the incident which has taken place in the forest, which other than me nobody would ever know? Which means her tapasya seems to be even more denser is, is denser than mine. And then the story goes further. But the whole thing is, he asks, how is it that you are able to have this knowledge? She says that I just live my life of tapasya. What is your tapasya? As a grahastha, I'm doing my duty. As a householder, I'm doing my duty. The whole thing is to tell you that even living the life of a grahastha properly itself now becomes a life of tapa, a life of inner purification, sanctification. And this is what Gautama is looking for. I mean, this is Gautama's philosophy. As against, we find Indra's philosophy. Indra is not really very, very different from the Daityas. The demons are of the, they have a philosophy, whether you get your things that you desire by book or crook, by legitimate or illegitimate means, it is irrelevant. Getting it, enjoying it is more important. 
whether you get it properly through a righteous and right way, irrelevant. It is not important. This is what the writers say. But Ibra is a little different. He says, well, I want the pleasures of life. I want to enjoy everything over here. But he believes that it should be had through righteous way. Punya. Not through power. He says it should come through the dharmic way, righteous way. Punya Mahārga. That is the only difference between the Daitya and the philosophy of Indra. Both of them are seeking, but he seeks through the right way and the other one is seeking through the wrong means. Procuring it all through the wrong means. Though there is some, this becomes the basic philosophy of Indra, yet you will never know when Indra also slips to the other side. Because now when he sees Ahalya, who is Anubhav Sundari, I mean, you know, beauty which is unparalleled, and she happens to be Gautama's wife, which I should have as the king of heaven. And therefore he, he now devises a way which is not legitimate. So when would Indra become or resort to illegitimate ways, you, are, you would never know. It just depends on the intensity of the desire of a person. It is not going to take very long for a person to change and transform his party from a righteous living person with, you know, being when the desire becomes intense, he can just jump onto the other side of the fence. Indra does that. Indra comes in a deceptive uh, way and he deceives Ahalya. He comes in the form of Gautama, etc. There is a declaration which you all people now know. Gautama comes back and Gautama discovers his wife with Indra. And this is not something that uh, the husband, Gautama, can just accept. He is furious. He is enraged. And there are two things that happen at the same time. Gautama decides to abandon her. Give her. And at the same time, he curses her to become inert and live like a rock. Just exist like a rock. A rock is existing. It does not have a purpose. You have a purpose. Even a chicken crossing the road has a purpose. You know, the dog going around has a purpose. For you and me, it just seems to be that the dog is just loitering around without any reason. You ask the dog, perhaps he will be able to give you the, uh, you know, the reason why he is going around. But there is a purpose. <coughs> a dog has a purpose. Every living being has a purpose. Ahalya's life is meaningless because there is no purpose now. Your purpose was to live a life of tapasya. You were never ever convinced that, well, let us have a life of fun and frolic and, you know, party around. Hedonism was never ever your philosophy. So even now, when Ahalya has already slept, hedonism is not going to be, become her philosophy. Since I have spent might as well, let me have more fun. No. Ahalya is never going to say that. No, you cannot even say that my life is meant for tapasya. Because you yourself have defeated your purpose. 
A rock does not have any meaning to its existence. A rock is sitting over there in the sun, in the rain, in the, in the, in the ice, just like that. The ice which is sitting in the glacier is not waiting. Oh well, I am waiting so that you know in Kali Yuga when Abhishek Chaitanya comes to bed, I will come down. <laughs> no. A glacier does not have any reason. There is no purpose. Ahilya's life has become purposeless. She is simply existing. It is, she is not even living. No purpose. You know, years back, I just remember this very interesting incident when some of our, you know, Brahmacharis, when we were studying and all that, they had gone to one of these Shri Krishna temples in Mumbai. We had gone to that Krishna temple. So the devotees of that temple residents and all, they saw different people and you know, perhaps with Bhasma and also immediately they have to prove something. So one of them came to him and said that, you know, we are the real followers of Krishna. And then he said, why? We, we also follow, we read Bhagavatam, we have Bhagavad Gita, what's wrong for us? Krishna he is our Ishta too. He said, no, no, no. Shri Krishna used to dance and sing, and we also dance and sing exactly, so we are the followers. And it is undeniable Shri Krishna has danced even on the battlefield when Arjuna is crying. The Upadesha of Shri Krishna is called as the song. It is called as Gitam, Gita. Arjuna, you are crying, I will also give you sat, you know, I will give you company, let's both cry. No. Arjuna can cry, but I am going to sing. Nothing, nothing ever challenges Sri Krishna's smile. Nothing can wipe, vanquish Sri Krishna's smile. That's Sukham. So, so now this he told that fellow that, yeah, you, Shri Krishna also dances, you also dance. But Shri Krishna dances out of joy and you are dancing for joy. There's a whole lot of difference. There is a difference. A Jivan Mukta does not have the same purpose as you and me. The enlightened one does not have this purpose. Well, 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 I will talk because, you know, after my talking, people will appreciate. Some of them will choose to become my followers and so on and so forth. No need. This is not his purpose. Why are you speaking? Why are you giving this Upadesha? He says, what to do? There is so much of joy inside, it is overflowing. And when it overflows, it overflows as words. Can't help. So him imparting knowledge is not a display of his scholarship. Him imparting knowledge is not that he, he has sympathy uh, towards somebody who is so despicable. No. He is imparting knowledge because it is just an expression of his overflowing joy. What is the purpose of your living, Ahalya? And Ahalya says, I have lost it all. There doesn't seem to be any purpose at all. Gautama cursing her to become a stone, to live as a rock. means a life which is purposeless, directionless. You know, Dr. Swami Dejavanity once said a very beautiful thing. He 
said a person should have some principles to live by. Choose your principles. Whatever it may be, but have a principle to live by. Because a person who does not have any principles at all, who does not stand for anything, falls for everything. He who does not stand for anything, he falls for everything. कुछ उसूल रखने चाहिए। वो स्वाभिमान नहीं देगा। अहंकार गलत चीज हो सकती है। स्वाभिमान आवश्यक है। स्वाभिमान गलत नहीं है। जब स्वाभिमान दूसरे के स्वाभिमान को उचलने की बात करता है तब वो अहंकार होता है। 